dice in questo istante Antien Zubeka. When I stood at the start of the stages in, in Terreno Adriatico and I'm standing in the car park, I thought I was, I thought I was dreaming. To see our team vehicles and, the, and our brand and the color of our team amongst the best teams in the world with all of their infrastructure that has been cast in stone for so many years, it was, it made a ride. We absolutely arrived. And then to see the performance of our riders and how confident they were in the racing, it's time. The time is now and, uh, and our team is, is here. When we show up in a race like Tirreno, so it looks great, yeah? We show up with, with a bus, with truck, with good riders, and yeah, everybody looks up at it because it's something new. All the other teams, they are existing since 20 years, so everybody wants to see what is this new team about. So easy, boys, easy, easy, easy. Oh, boys, it's a good time. Come, keep going. So in the first three months of the year, we just put the whole team together. We started the season quite late, but then we got an opportunity to race Terreno Adriatico and Milano Sanremo, two World Tour races. Yeah, luckily we stayed safe and we didn't crash. So I think for our first team time trial, we did pretty well. We'll see what our time was, I'm not sure, but yeah, we have to be all safe. Looking forward to the week as there are some stages coming where we want to show ourselves. I have to start thinking about what the best possibility is to, to make a nice result that we can go home and that we have shown ourselves as a strong team here. So we were very fortunate in that we inherently took riders that are at a point in their career where they want to still be successful. We've, uh, we've managed to really put these guys on top and, and get them to shine again. Right? They're all guys that have been really good in races before and so they, the, the talent was always there. So we've just now, I guess, lit the match and, uh, and they're, they're shining. And then you do this lap. He is in such a shape that we have the chance to win. And if we want to win, then it's today the only chance, yeah? Initially we wanted to be 50% African and 50% from Europe. We didn't want to go below a 50% African team. And then when we ended up starting the first year, we were 70% from the continent of Africa, which is, which is really high. And we handpicked six European riders that could really add a huge amount of value to the team. And the, the six riders were split into two categories, one for the classics, so the single day major events in world cycling, and one for stage races because we knew that our African riders and the riders from, from South Africa and, and other countries are very light and far better adapted to stage race riding. So we wanted to have riders from overseas and international riders that could mentor our riders in both of those disciplines of the sport. I think we will always have international riders on the team and I think it's important to have that flavour of uh, you know in, in a European team that wants to be successful in Europe. So I don't think we will ever be 100% African. I do think that within the next three years that our African riders, instead of being the support riders in, to our Europeans, will then start realising that they have the ability to succeed themselves and start to, to grab the mantle and then and actually go for the wins. When we see that transition happen, that'll be a turning point for, for African cycling. And I really believe that in the next three years, we will see that turning point. And when that happens, it will be massive for, this, for cycling on this continent. Yeah, just a hell of a feeling to follow a race for uh, five and uh, three quarter hours and then eventually come out uh, with two top ten finishes including a podium. I think it's quite something to see guys beating riders of the, the, the caliber of Cavendish. So very exciting for the team. Uh, riders exhausted so recovery is going to be important. I mean on the, on the one hand side, uh, absolute super to be third, but if I listen to uh, Gerald and I hear that still something more was possible. So incredible, incredible. I mean, the boys did a fantastic job. They made a perfect lead out. 
we are here in a pro tour race where all the big teams are and if we are doing a lead out I mean it's fantastic I didn't expect this I must really say so super Bitte. good job boys perfect well done third place fantastic We wanted the staffing component of our team to be world-class. The infrastructure around them at the moment, we at the same level of any other team. A lot of teams have got what we got and we've got a lot more than what other teams have got at the level that we're at, so we should be happy with it. We're offering the riders everything that they need to race at the top level. There's nothing that they're missing from bikes to training, clothing, nutrition. There's not one thing that the team hasn't looked at and helped the cyclists with, so there's no excuse to not move forward from there. Okay, I think Jay is still lying on the ground there. Uh, okay. I was moving up and I couldn't break. We get no breaks in this wheelchair. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, we had hard circumstances the last three days, so full gas rain each day. So the rider struggling a bit with a uh, muscle and yeah, Jay crashed. So we have some, some problems for the doctor, but um, yeah, today is a complete different day. Uh, it's something for the climbers, so three tough climbs. Fundamentally from the beginning it was to have the right people in place that could you know, really support the riders and be incredibly positive. Our head director, Wayne Zemke, who worked with HTC for many years. He, was, he also looked after the women's team, so he understands the sport in totality. And he's done Tour de France's, many of the classics, and managed riders that have been world champions and previous Tour de France champions. So he's done all the races. He's incredibly calm and he's a really good influence on the riders because they trust every single thing that he says because he's that, he's that experience. We also have Brent Copeland, who's our European manager. He's lived in Italy for 20 years. He's done more grand tours than anybody in, in South Africa or in Africa. And he is a South African guy that is based in South Africa. So he understands the culture of our riders and is incredibly experienced. We also have Kevin Campbell, another, our last director, who has been through the UCI Africa Tour and raced all the Africa Tour races. So he understands the culture of African cycling and the riders from the different countries. So he's been a, a huge asset because he really knows how to, how to listen and, and understand the majority of riders on our team.
Milan San Remo, the most uh, incredible bike classic of all times, and to have our vehicles parked amongst all of the others and all of the big world tour teams is uh, is incredible. It's actually, uh, I hope when I wake up, there's, there's not a cold cup of coffee next to my bed, but it's just, uh, yeah, it's amazing to see, and I think all the riders are also feeling really, really happy to be here. So, um, yeah, hopefully it's a really good day, and it's the start of uh, of the future of South African and African cycling in the world tour. My passion has always been to develop an African world champion. I really believe that that was possible. It, it had to happen. We had to do it. And we had to get more black riders onto bicycles and we had to, to get those guys and give them opportunities to succeed. And if we did give them opportunities to, to succeed, how far could they go? Africa has developed the best endurance runners that there is, and so why not cyclists? And that's why with the Quebec story and the Quebec program, the more kids that we get onto bikes, then we're definitely winning. I think it's incredible, you know, St. Gizem's come a long way from where he started. You know, you hear the story where he was, you had to watch uh, Carlos Sastra win the Tour de France, so, you know, you think about it back then, you know, I don't think he ever thought that he would be racing alongside the guys that he was watching. Yeah, I feel, uh, I'm feeling really excited to be here. And also, yeah, I'm also a bit nervous, but yeah, it's, uh, it's my first time starting a World Tour race, but I don't think I'm the only one who's starting a World Tour race, so it's normal. Yeah, but it's, it's, sometimes it's good to be nervous, and yeah. Been a, f a big day for Songeza and been great to see him there being so generous with the fans. The biggest day in his whole life. Yeah, basically what's happened is uh, it started snowing this morning after about 20 kilometers of riding. So they've decided to stop the race in the town of Ovada where we find ourselves now. As you can see, there's a lot of snow lying around. There's six riders in a break, so they're going to take the time difference between now. Guys are going to get into the bus, get changed, get ready to start again on the other side on the coast. They'll be doing, I think it's 170 kilometers to San Remo. So I think we're still going to get to see a good race. So Milan San Remo is 298 kilometers. The guys have raced 117 kilometers when it was it went down to zero degrees and snow and rain, and so they cut out to the Kino, the, the mountain pass, which is, uh, was obviously snowed in. And now they're starting again with 135 kilometers to race, and uh, it's five degrees and raining. So it's a brutal, brutal, brutal race today. So the riders after the after they stopped got into the bus, all had showers and uh, put on brand new clothing, had something to eat and now they're getting heat wrap put back onto their legs. The mechanics have taken the bikes off the roof of the car and all the cables are frozen so that they've got to get the bikes going quickly and, uh, and they start racing again in 15 minutes. It's, it's a crazy sport. They cut out a section of like 70 k so we still have 120 k to go. The break has 7 minutes so, and 6 riders so I think it's going to be full gas now. Guys in the front, and uh, Chiolek is also inside, and he's clever. He not follow. Uh, he not chasing nothing. He only stay on the wheel. It's very clever. Well, Gerald Chiolek is a sprinter by trade. He's with a uh, the relatively unknown MTN Quebec team. 
new to uh, Pro Continental Racing this year, new to World Cup Racing, and what a contribution they've made. Don't forget, of course, Luca Paolini at the back of the group already has won a significant one-day race. I'd um, right at this given point, I would say keep uh, keep your eyes on Gerard Cholik. He um, he will be very very dangerous for the wing here. And here comes the big dig at the end. Peter Sagan goes on the right-hand side. He kicks it off in a big way. Here comes Gerard Gialek of the MTN Kubeka team. Who's going to get it? And it looks as if Gialek just about has the legs as they go to the line. It's almost a play. But the Chipressa, as we watch for the group coming in behind. And uh, while well, they're sprinting for the minor honours, and uh, Katusha Ryder, I'm not exactly sure who that was, that managed to uh, pick up the result there at the back of the group. But no doubt about who got the win, and that was Gerald Cielek of the MTN Quebec team, already making a wonderful, wonderful impression on uh, World Tour Racing and just about edging out Peter Sagan. What a wonderful performance and what a fantastic race that they gave us today. And what a story. What a story. Yes, yeah, South African racing is certainly uh, on the up with a great performance from the German Gerald Schielek who takes victory in Milan San Remo 2013. <laughs> <laughs> 